The following story occurred in the summer of 2005. I live in Georgia and went to the University of Georgia. My girlfriend, now wife, lived in Atlanta, about a 65-mile drive from Athens, Georgia. The highway which takes you to Athens from Atlanta is a two-lane highway called 316. This information is important for the story. It was a Sunday evening, and I had spent the weekend in Atlanta and was now driving back to Athens. In the summer, there were very few cars on the road on Sunday evening as many students go home for the summer. I was driving a black BMW SUV and was just cruising along listening to some tunes. I literally had seen no cars for miles as I approached one of the traffic lights along 316. The light was red and I came to a stop alongside an older Mustang. It looked like an 80s 5-liter model and was black with a rag top. The windows of the Mustang were tinted. I really did not give the car another thought. I just sat there and waited for the light to turn green. The light turned green and the Mustang suddenly sped off with a squeal of the tires, as if the driver floored the engine from an idle position. The car sped off far in front of me. I was a bit surprised, but just thought, may another redneck, who cares? The car sped out of sight and out of mind. I continue to drive along and am back in chill mode again, when suddenly a car with high beams on appears directly behind me. I thought, what the fuck? I quickly realized it was the same Mustang from earlier. The car had been waiting on the side of the highway for me. I looked down to make sure my phone was charging in case I needed it. It was. Next, the Mustang switches lanes and flies up beside me, keeps pace for a few seconds, and then takes off in front of me. The car switches lanes to be in my lane and brakes suddenly bringing the car to a halt. I swerve into the other lane and speed up. The Mustang speeds up beside me and starts to swerve at me trying to knock me off the road. It then speeds up again and tries the braking maneuver once again. At this point I am freaking out. I am a 6'3", 220 pounds male who works out religiously. I don't easily get scared. In this situation size did not matter. I note the license plate on the car and grab my cell phone, but as I do the car is suddenly beside me again and starts swerving at me. As I jerk my wheel to the side my phone flies out of my hands into the passenger side door. The Mustang is then behind me, flashing its brights, right on my bumper speeding up, slowing down, blaring its horn and swerving side to side. Then suddenly it speeds out of sight and is gone. I collect myself, take a deep breath, and drive the remainder of the 10 minutes to the turnoff that is the road to the town where my house is located. I make a quick decision to drive to the police station located in my town on my way home to file a report. I had the license plate number memorized and had been mentally reciting it over and over again. As I turn off the road to the town where I live, Bright lights fill my rearview mirror again, and the Mustang is behind me, again. It speeds past me and turns down another road and is gone. I arrive at the police station and give them the license plate number. This is a fairly small police station and I believe there was only one officer working. He tells me it is probably somebody mistaking me for someone else. He runs the plate number and tells me the owner of the license plate number is deceased. He states it is probably a stolen license plate. Now completely freaked out, I finish filing the police report and head home. I am at home on the phone with my girlfriend when suddenly someone beats loudly on my garage door several times followed by a squeal of tires. I never see a car, but I call the cops immediately. The cops come and nothing is ever found. I didn't sleep for several nights, but that was the end of it. I was living in Starkville, Mississippi at the time. I had a business meeting on a Friday morning in Baton Rouge I had to be at. I had just bought myself a nice brand new, excellent heavy duty 2013 Ford truck. I sell tools for a living and my truck was nicely decked out. I have tool compartments all over the place, it looks like a working man's truck when you see it. This business meeting was kind of a big deal but not a real big deal. I was just going to meet a certain client and close on a distributing deal. So needless to say, I was celebrating the night before. I decided I would be out all night, then come back to my place catch a nap, shower up, and then head to Baton Rouge. A four-hour drive for me, usually, so the night had ended in the college town of Starkville. Everything closes here at 12 a.m. on the weeknight. I get back to my place, immediately fall out on my couch, set a two-hour alarm and get my two-hour nap. I wake up, go about my business and get ready. I always have a checklist for drives longer than an hour due to previous crises experiences that have come with my job. List is checked all good to go. I get me a coffee before I leave town, and it is off to the highway. After a while on Highway 25 South, I can't remember how long exactly, it was between 3 and 4-ish AM. I do remember it being a very dead area of nothing really around me. I hadn't seen one single car on the highway yet, which is very typical for the area around here on a weeknight. 
I see emergency lights flashing up ahead, a broken down van with a man under it. He had one flat tire and a smoking engine as far as I could tell before I got out. At this time I was giddy and actually excited. I had just put a nice new air tire monster of a machine in the bed of my truck. I couldn't wait to use my equipment to help this guy out, as I enjoy helping people out as much as I can when I can. Before I got out, I made sure I got my gun out from the back seat, made sure it was hot and ready for use. Then as I got out, I put it in the back of my shirt tail in the back of my pants firmly. I got out and got close to him where he could hear me. I asked him the usual, what seems to be the problem, sir? He came out under the vehicle with a wheel brace removal and a long pipe. I thought this was kind of odd, so I distanced myself a bit as he came out from under. He was Mexican and his English was very poor. He said, broke, broke, and then pointed underneath the vehicle as for me to get under and take a look. I shook my head no, and then raised my hand and told him while pointing out. I was going to go around the vehicle and inspect it just in case for any other damage I haven't seen. I was about to tell him that his problem didn't seem like it was under the vehicle, but I was trying to get this done in a sense of urgency type pace. The man just kind of nodded after I explained what I was about to do. The whole time I was looking down at the vehicle, not looking in it. I was looking for any more signs of damage. When I got to the front hood of the car, the lights went very bright. Someone else was in the vehicle. I was initially kind of blinded and yelled out, Hey, what are you doing, man? But I saw the guy that nodded was still at the end of the vehicle, yelling at others in the distance. After I backed away a few yards, I could see about ten people coming after me from off the side of the highway. They all had a weapons of sorts. I remember seeing a few bats and chains. The person that turned on the lights had gotten out and the guy gave him the pipe. I felt my heart drop for a moment. It felt scary and surreal. Then the instant panic and fear I felt turned to rage and adrenaline. As that switch that gets turned on a few of you might know when you are about to die and you don't want to. The time I felt all this seemed like forever but was only a brief 30 or 40 seconds. I then reached for my Glock behind me and fired two warning shots in the air. All of them immediately started running away back to where they came from. The two people that were closest to me were hightailing it out as well. I moved to my truck slowly and firmly, both hands on the gun in a defensive position. I got to my truck and got out of there so fast you would have thought I was in a raptor. I was shaking afterwards for a few minutes and learned my lesson. Never help anyone on the highway after dark unless you know them. This story takes place last April. I was a senior in high school. I've lived my whole life in the Midwest, so I was always eager for spring break when I would vacation to somewhere more interesting. This year I was going to Oregon with my friend Mary. Mary was three years older than me and dating my best friend Josh, who was attending the University of Oregon. She happened to be moving there the week of my spring break so it was perfect for me to ride along. We set off on our journey on Friday night at 10.30 p.m. I know, weird time to leave, but it was nice to get through Chicago in the middle of the night to escape traffic. We spent most of Saturday driving through flat, boring farmland. We got to see the Badlands National Park, which was pretty cool, especially after such a boring day. At around 11 p.m. that night, we were both exhausted, so we called and booked a hotel in Montana, about three hours away. We were starting to enter the section of this part of the country that was pretty much just a ton of Native American reserves when we turned down a long, beat-up road. Only one other car was on this road, and it was a large white truck that had been behind us for a while. We drove on this road for a few miles before this car started riding our ass. We slowed down and let him pass, and he floored it. Again, us being exhausted, we saw this as an opportunity to get to our hotel faster. We figured it was a local that knew that he could speed without any trouble, so we sped down the road just a few miles less than him to make our trip shorter. We came to a stop and he turned left, which we also happened to be doing. He pulled into a parking lot for a bar that was just on the corner as we continued, but he didn't park, he just waited, and as we passed he pulled out behind us. Now I am a very paranoid person, so I told Mary that I thought he was following us, but she reassured me he probably just didn't want us behind him because some people are like that. I agreed and we kept on. I was still nervous but I watched him turn off the road and my mind was at ease. Fast forward about half an hour and Mary is starting to show obvious signs of exhaustion in her demeanor. So I offered to drive the rest of the way, she said, okay, and that she'd pull off at the next chance. Problem was, the road we were on didn't connect with any other roads. There were no driveways or stores, or really anything except for wide open plains for miles. She decided to pull off the road to make the switch, but as she started to pull over, a bright set of headlights came up out of nowhere, 
and looked like they were in the back of her car. This guy ran us off the road and we almost crashed. We came to a stop and both looked at each other like, what was that? But before we could say anything, the car from behind pulled off like 15 yards ahead of us, and it was the white truck from before. My heart sank and I said, Mary, don't get out of the car, just keep driving, do not stop. She was obviously weirded out at this point, but wasn't totally convinced that it was all that dangerous. But she saw I was scared and started to creep back on the road. The guy ahead must have seen us moving as he started to drive too. We stopped again and he drove slowly, about a quarter mile up the road, turned off into a patch of trees, and killed his headlights. I told her that I was sure he was following us. We had been driving forever, and what were the odds we encountered each other again? She called Josh so we could get a third opinion. He was never the type to assume the worst, and he wasn't there, so he told us that it was probably a coincidence and that we should keep driving and be weary. So we continued on for another 20 minutes without seeing him. But when we passed through another small town, I spotted him. He was sitting at a stop sign on a side road facing the road we were on, with his lights off. We passed by him. He turned his lights on and started driving again, right on our tail. At this point, Mary was convinced, and she immediately called 911. We were in the middle of nowhere, though, and her phone kept dropping the call. The dispatcher said they couldn't get a read on our location and asked where we were, but not even the map on my phone would load. We felt like we were dead already. He passed us again, and I shouted for Mary to speed up so I could write his plate number down. We got it right before he sped off out of sight. The dispatcher was able to find us and told us to head to the nearest police station, about 15 minutes away. She also told us to not stop driving, and that this guy was a professional at what he was doing. She informed us that his tactic of passing us was so he could know where we were turning and going, so he could always be one step ahead. Fear sank into both of us when we realized that he knew exactly where we were, even when we didn't know where he was. We drove on, with him popping out behind us once more and again, speeding off. I got the police station pulled up on my phone and we were almost there. We stopped at the light where we were supposed to turn right, but we hadn't seen this guy in a while, and this looked like the perfect road to sneak around on. I didn't tell Mary to turn, she kept driving. She asked me where it was and I felt guilty not telling her, so I told her that we passed it and that my phone hadn't loaded the directions until just then. She made a U-turn and we headed back. On the way there, we passed the guy. He was headed the way we were going before turning around, and we don't think he saw us. We made it to the police station where they were expecting us, and they sent cars out to find him. We got a police escort to our hotel an hour away, and the rest of our trip was as normal as can be. We calculated that he followed us for somewhere around 60 miles. We don't know if he was caught, nor do we know what his intentions were. But I still get chills whenever I tell this story, and whenever I see a similar white truck. Remember this story while taking long road trips, and don't forget to always check what's behind you.